Well, open with me, please, to the uh, book of Acts, chapter 8. I want to bring out something that we've obviously gone over before uh, since we've, we're studying in the Word of God. And, uh, and I was praying, and I, I, I didn't... I didn't get a clear do this today, really, from the Lord. And, and then when I got here, I was looking at some things, and I believe this is what I'm supposed to be speaking about this morning. And we have two main subjects in this chapter 8. One is uh, what to do with those who are false, and the other one is about the true gospel. <coughs> and so... Uh, read with me, starting chapter one, or verse one. Actually, uh, chapter eight probably shouldn't have started until uh, verse five, because we see the first four verses of chapter eight is really the end of chapter seven, where Paul was consenting about the stoning of the death, the death of, by stoning of Stephen, and so. I to say now Saul was consenting to his death at that time a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles all the other followers a lot of them were scared they left that reason to be scared because it was serious persecution in those days as it still happens in some of those places today you just get whacked that's all there is to it you get all your stuff taken you get abused accosted uh, and of course that is exactly what's happening to all who are persecuted today but we don't see it as much we don't recognize it because we live in relative comfort you know we can go to the mall today if we want to or not this kind of thing those people don't have those options and especially back back here they just didn't have those options when everybody knew that there are many gods and you pray to the rain god and the sun god and the crop god and the animal god and some other god and the war god and the music god and the success god and the health god you know what i mean this sort of thing this is called the pantheon of gods, Greek and Greco-Roman gods. And everybody had this uh, polytheism in mind at the time because that's what was taught. You know, you believe in your God, I believe in my God, we'll both get to heaven eventually. This is what they're trying to tell us today, isn't it? And the Bible, of course, comes against this and saying, no, that's a lot of nonsense. There's only one truth and one God. And so this, this, uh, <clears throat> this, uh, a great persecution came, verse 2, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial as he just got done being stoned by his own people. Uh, he, Stephen recounted the whole story of how God, you know, called Abraham and so forth and so on. And, uh, and then he, he's a wonderful story. And they all said, yeah, yeah, that's history, that's history. And then he says, yeah, but you all stoned him to death. In other words, you guys are murderers. Then they didn't like it anymore. Then all of a sudden what Stephen had to say wasn't any good, so now they picked up stones to stone him to death, and they did just that. And Paul the Apostle, who at the time was Saul, uh, before he got saved, was agreeing to this. He was agreeing with his murder in his heart. He was holding the, the coats and the clothing of those who were throwing the rocks, you know, the higher-ups anyway, because he was a higher-up Pharisee himself. And that's one reason uh, God picked Paul to write two-thirds of the New Testament, because... Paul knew the ways of Judaism. He also knew the ways of the world. He knew about, you know, uh, uh, non-Jewish writers, Greek writers, and so forth, and poets. He understood what the deal was. He understood the intellectualism. And then it says in verse 3, And for Saul he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. This is the man who later wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. That's why he says, and uh, he goes down, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm the least of all sinners, and I'm the least of the apostles, and I'm the least of all. Because he, and, but yet at the same time he says, you know, I don't, I don't do what was past. I know who I was in the past. I forget that stuff, and I go forward looking for the prize, which was salvation, which was glorification. So Paul knew who he was in the Lord. He knew who he was before. And all of us really need to know that, and this is true even for other aspects of, of life. If we don't know history, we don't really know where we are at this time, and we don't even know who we are. The problem with history has been and is now that it's been skewed. More and more books are coming out by historians who are claiming to write the truth, 
and are bringing out a lot more truth that was hidden previously. You know, nonsense about uh, Abraham Lincoln and how he freed the slaves. The fact is there are many, 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 many quotes about Abraham Lincoln just as one case study in mind. He didn't care one way or the other about slavery. He couldn't care less. Slavery was not even in his mind and his heart about the war between the states. That was all about business and only business. Business, 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 money. The North wasn't making much money. The South was bringing in most of the revenue for the nation. The South said, we're done with this. We don't even believe what you guys believe in. We want to secede, and that's what that was all. It had nothing to do with slaves, okay? But that's the nonsense that's peddled, isn't it? Isn't that what you all learned in school? Yeah. Lincoln freed the slaves? Well, he didn't. And, of course, there was a big debacle afterwards. You've heard of the carpetbaggers, right? who went in taking advantage of these people who needed guidance and who didn't have any, many of them. Many did not. Many could survive on their own, you know. Many learned to read and write. Uh, many were even prominent business people, especially in the South, Jamaica, places like that. My point is, the history we and I learned is not the truth. It's like that about every nation, about every war. Who writes history? The victor writes history. So they write it to suit themselves. And there are many, many other lies like that. But if, you want, if you're diligent enough and you want to find out the truth, you start with the book, the Word of God, and then you compare whatever you read and whatever you find out to the Word of God. In other words, I can compare if I do a character study of Abraham Lincoln or anybody else, and then you can compare the things he said and wrote, not what people said about him, the things that we can quote him on. Like the Gettysburg Address is one of them. You know what it says at the end? You know, the government for the people, by the people, of the people, it will stand forever. What does the Bible say about that? No, democracy is going down. It's a joke anyway. Jesus Christ will rule in a theocracy as King of kings and Lord of lords. There is no forever. Amen. If it's for the people, by the people, and to the people and all that, it's the people. The majority of the people are sinners. How can that be right? Well, it isn't. But it sounds neat, you know, after you won this battle, you know, and, you know, the union's going to prevail. The union prevailed on Rothschild money. That's the bottom line. Because they had other ideas in mind. The Industrial Revolution, which began in England, spread to the United States, and from there then to the back to the rest of Europe. And so what we have is lots and lots of money, money, money. And we see this as we go on here. Read with me. <laughs> that money is really the driving force. I've preached before how mammon is the only other God. Jesus said, so not me. It's not, you know, carved trees and rocks and, and you know, crucifixes and all this nonsense. Of course, that's part of it. But those, those things aren't even really a real challenge to God. To, those things aren't real anyway. It's money. It's mammon. That's the real challenge to God. All right. Verse 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Notice how those who are real, nothing deter deters them from preaching the word. Nothing deters them from saying the truth. Come and kill me, come and torture me, come and take all I got, do whatever you need to do, but the truth is going forward because I have a life that is forever and in that one I want to reside. And all those who are with me on that uh, will also reside in forever with the Lord. Hallelujah. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Who did he preach? Christ, the Savior and his anointed, or rather his anointing. In other words, he was chosen by God. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and saying the miracles which, seeing the miracles which he did. So God confirmed his words by miracles. Okay? And then verse 7 explains what he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many and were who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. They needed these miracles back then, much more than we do today. Today it's a miracle-seeking crowd. Jesus said uh, an adulterous and, and evil generation is one who seeks for signs and wonders. So we shouldn't seek for them. We should recognize when they come and recognize that's God. However, what's Satan going to do in these last days? He's already doing it. He's going to present lying wonders, the Bible tells us. It's going to look like a miracle, but it won't really be from God. Okay? So there was great joy, and obviously, uh, it says many, which means not all. Many had great joy. Many were healed. And I haven't seen this myself, 
uh, except for phony versions of it. But guys like uh, Jacob Prash and many others, and uh, many uh, uh, who serve as, as uh, <coughs> excuse us, missionaries all over the world, especially places like Africa, you know, the Middle East, uh, the Far East, China, etc., and South America certainly, uh, Middle America even, they see miracles where these things happen, uh, where people crawl around the floor like a snake possessed by the devil, uh, and hiss and all the rest of it, and it's not. A phony thing as such is just what they're compelled to do at that moment because the devil has taken hold of them. These things do happen. Crazy things happen. We had a report back when we were with the Word of Faith uh, place, but the report I believe is true that blades were coming out of a guy's stomach. Blades and screws and things like that and they even put them in a safe and to, for safekeeping so they were tangible, they were touchable when they went back in to try to show somebody they were gone the next day. Call me crazy. But these things do happen because Satan is able to do these things. He's able to present himself not only as an angel of light, in other words, someone of truth, but he can do things that are metaphysical, that are otherworldly. All these you know, sightings that they had, especially in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, they had a lot of sightings because many people thought that World War II was the end of the world. Hitler was the Antichrist. Well, he was an Antichrist, but he wasn't the Antichrist. Just like Napoleon was an Antichrist. Just like all the Caesars were. And all the other so-called leaders and despots in the world who were murdering people, all for power and so forth. They were, they're all Antichrists. John said, even now many Antichrists are with us back 2,000 years ago. All those who preach against Christ are Antichrists. But the main Antichrist is yet to come, and he's probably already alive. Because I, I believe we're that far down the pike. We're circling the drain, okay, in that proverbial tub. We're not two inches full of none of that. We're circling the drain. We just got a quarter and a half inch of water rushing to the drain. That's about where we are time-wise. And so we see this now coming up. This whole money business, all of it is money. Even the guys that claim they, they, wanna, they, they, want, they want to build a one world whatever is all about mammon in the end. Uh, Look at verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which is to say Peter, which means the rock, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. Sorcery in the Bible refers to, the word is pharmakeia, it refers to drugs, it refers to spells, it refers to uh, any kind of magic like that. Okay. In fact, I'll tell you something. You know, anybody know what nation invented porcelain? Well, it was Germany. Yeah. Did you know that? No, I was going to say China. <laughs> you thought it was China? <laughs> it was close. <laughs> uh, it was actually in Germany, and the reason it was an accident, like many inventions are accidents, but King Ludwig II, who started out good but ended up really bad uh, as far as his rule and so forth, but he wanted someone which was common at the time, and this goes all the way back you know, to the Middle Ages and beyond, Back in the you know, days of King Arthur and all this, of course King Arthur is a fictitious thing, but back in those days uh, we had Merlin the Magician, okay, and everyone since then and all the stories was trying to make gold out of lead. They thought it was possible to change lead into gold. They really wanted it. Why? Mammon! Isn't it? What, a, what is today? Let me, let me put that out, point that out today. Uh, James Rickard just wrote a, a new book. Uh, he's, a, he's an expert on money, he's very good, I've followed his stuff, and, uh, and the, the new case for gold, because in the last 50 years or so, students of, of, uh, of finance are taught that money is not gold, money, I mean, money is not, uh, rather gold is not money, gold is nothing, uh, gold can, can get you a, 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 a profit, and so forth and so on. Well, that's true, that's because gold doesn't need a profit, gold is what it is, it's intrinsic, it's money all by itself, and God invented it for you and me along with silver, but gold is the king here, okay? And so we've gotten away from that, and we've got paper money and, and cheap coin. The coins are no longer silver and gold. The coins are practically worthless metal that nobody really would pay you for, and we've come to that stage. But yet, at the same time, every central bank is hoarding gold right now. China is hoarding gold like crazy. They're the biggest gold buyer in the world. India is second, so-called third nations at one time, Russia is a big gold hoarder. In fact, got, Russia is the biggest gold producer in the world. Did you know that one metric ton of gold 
or only gives you 6.5 or so, 6.6 .6 ounces of gold. One metric ton, that's, that's a generality, okay? Some, some you have more vein than others, you don't understand what I'm saying. But basically that's it. That's a lot of work to get this much gold, right? <laughs> okay, and, but the world is ate up. And so gold is coming back. Uh, Germany wanted its gold back from the United States. Uh, and from France, and they got some of it back, but not all of it, because they trade like this. They don't really want it all back. That's a whole other story I don't want to get into. But the point is, gold, gold, gold. Everybody's hoarding gold, yet they're all trading fiat. Everybody know what fiat means. Fiat means ordered or commanded money. It's represented by paper with pictures and numbers on it that you carry in your wallet. The dollar bill, the five dollar bill. It's fiat because it was ordered. It's not real money. It's not. It doesn't have any value. But gold has value. Everybody got me? Mm -hmm. So everybody is hoarding, uh, hoarding and storing gold. Why? We're using fiat. The British pound, the American dollar, the euro, all that's fiat money. The Chinese yuan. But it has to be worth something. It has to be backed by us. Even though officially they took the backing off or the pegging, they don't peg it to anything. Still, everybody really knows what money is. And what is money? Gold! And silver, but basically gold. Okay, never forget it folks. This is why individuals, if you can, get a few coins here and there. You can buy as much as a tenth of, of an ounce of, of gold and build up like that if you can. If not, don't worry about it. God will take care of it. But the point is, gold is what real money is and it keeps your store of value uh, now let me see what this Simon does. He was what? He was a sorcery. That means he dealt in witchcraft. He dealt with drugs, hallucinogenic type stuff, and all the rest. And look what it says in verse 10. He was uh, claiming that he was someone great, all the people, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. So they saw that Simon's false miracles were from God. You see how quickly it is to fool somebody with a miracle. Look, my finger's crooked. Came in like that. Lord, if thou be willing, straighten my finger. Oh, it's a miracle! <laughs> this is what people do. And people believe it. Because the majority of people are basically ignorant of the Word of God. I, Joel and I were talking the way here. Let me, it just came to me, so I guess I'm supposed to say it. The two, the, the one argument, is only one argument and one answer to the two things. The people who don't get it about money are ignorant. The majority of people are ignorant of the Word. They don't know what it is. Ford said it, even George Bush Sr. said it. If the people knew what we just passed yesterday in Congress, they'd chase us down the street, he said, and want to lynch us. He knew he was guilty. He shouldn't have done what he did. It was totally outside the Constitution. I'm talking about being educated in the Word of God. Okay? These guys knew nothing about, that's why people who don't know anything about politics are ignorant about that, and people who don't know anything about money are ignorant about that. So you have the same answer. Both are ignorant about politics and money. And I endeavor to do my best to help you guys, because uh, I know you guys can't get into it, don't have the time like I now have. Well, I don't feel like I spent much less time when I was working full time. <laughs> I was always, you know. But the point is, we got to know something, not, not to pinpoint things, to be, oh, that's that, and that's that, but to know what the big picture is, so that we can judge things by the Word of God, okay? That, that's the whole point. Well, let's read on about Simon. He's an interesting character, actually. Uh, he, was, he was someone great. And what he does is from God. Well, they just said that they were all amazed at what Stephen did, which was from God. You know, getting all these devils out of these people. They thought that was great. And, and now, they also some of these same people were saying, well, look what he's doing. Simon's doing some stuff. That's pretty great, too. It says here, from the least to the greatest thought this in verse 10. Then 11, and they heeded him, they paid attention to him, they believed him, because he had astonished them with his sorcery for a long time. He was a magician, sleight of hand, 
the, everything that, that, that magic uh, pertains to, okay? This is why, and if you like Disneyland, I understand. I've been there myself, the one in California at least. You know, I grew up with all that Mickey Mouse nonsense, but I tell you what, it's about magic. What's magic about? Demonic stuff. The fairies that you know, sprinkle dust and all this kind of stuff. It's all, we, we say, oh, it's children's stuff, and it's, oh, it's just a children's story. It's just a make-believe, blah, blah, blah. It's all based on paganism. That's why we live in a fallen world, folks. Can you imagine Jesus Christ telling somebody or having, having a, 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 a fairy land somewhere and charging people to come see it? Can you imagine that? I know that this is what we're all used to because it's part of who we are as a society on earth. But we need to understand the difference, okay? And uh, Walt Disney was a drug addict, a cocaine addict. He couldn't get enough snorting done. He owed nothing, rather he owned nothing but the shirt on his back and he probably didn't own that. Everything was borrowed money. He was in debt up to the Wa and the zoo. By his own admission. You see, and we hold these people, oh, Walt Disney, oh, look what he did. Disneyland, Disney World, Disney, 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 M-I-C-K-E-Y, blah, 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 blah. TV shows, we all grew up like this. Do you understand how it's not Christian? Well, I don't see how it hurts. You know when Elvis Presley first came out, and you young ones probably don't know who he is, but he was gyrating his hips and the whole rock and roll thing, and there were preachers mainly Southern Baptists and others who were saying, oh, that's all the devil, blah, blah, blah. And I myself as a youngster thought, ah, you preacher, you're an idiot. This is fun. This is freedom. This is rebellion. This is all this. I was totally on board with that. But now that I'm 64 in a few months, I'm telling you, they were right. Because it didn't lead to anything positive even, as the world would say. It didn't lead to anything good. It certainly didn't lead to anything godly. Look what came out of the rock and roll movement. Punk rock, acid rock, and all that steel clanging stuff, the, what do you call it, the industrial rock, you know. I mean, it's all total nonsense. And with that came MTV, and you know what MTV is, mm -hmm. a total evil bunch of nonsense. Did it start out like that? No, I watched MTV the first couple of years it was out. I was, you know, still in the world. But then I realized, man, this stuff is promoting stuff that just shouldn't be promoted by anybody. And what's up with that idiotic uh, mentality of adult movie as opposed to, what, child movie? It's crazy. Are you saying, hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Mm yes. -hmm. Okay, verse 12. Look what's happening. Simon is being uh, uh, challenged here. But then, or rather, but when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. Understand this. Don't forget this verse 13. Simon, this sorcerer, this pagan, this false, you know, uh, a wonder giver, believed, it says, and was baptized. And he continued hanging out with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done because he couldn't match anything like that. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria or Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Why would they do that? Well, they wanted to make sure that everything was right, it was the truth and not some perversion of it, not some watered down Mickey Mouse version. <coughs> and verse 16 says, For as yet... Uh, the Holy Spirit, or uh, I'm sorry, when they had come down, uh, the, the apostles came down so that they could pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because as yet he has not fallen on them. So they were amazed, but they weren't filled with the Spirit of God. There's a difference, okay? They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. There's a group right now called the Jesus Only Faction. There's a church there off of 4th Street in Lafayette. Uh, it's only Jesus. If you do Father, Father, or Son, Holy Spirit, no, 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 it's only Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. They take one verse and they totally take it out of context. You cannot do it. You cannot prove by the Word of God the entirety of it, which is what you must do, that it's Jesus only. It's ridiculous. 
Jesus means Savior. God has 15 or 16 compound names in the Bible. Which one of the Jehovah's Witnesses is going to pick, you know? So they come around, they say, oh, no, it's only Jehovah. Well, that's only one of his names. Then that's a compound name by itself. See, the whole thing is crazy. The truth is the truth and nothing but the truth. And you take it together. You take it together is what it means. So you can't take one scripture out of context. All right. So they laid hands on them. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them mammon or money. And in those days, he would have offered them real gold coins. Saying to the apostles, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. And go back to verse 13. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, that is in water, he, had con he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracle and signs that were done. So he believed, and now he's wanting to buy the Holy Spirit. What's that tell you about his belief? See, if I just go by 13, I said, well, Simon believed. God was saved. Well, when we read further, we find out he couldn't have been. Listen to what goes on. It says, The Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me of this power also, that anyone on whom I lay my hands receive the Holy Spirit. He just wanted to be a hero and said, Oh, go get Simon, have him lay his hand on you, so I, and then you can get the Holy Spirit. Listen to what Peter says in verse 20. Your money perish with you. Perish, that is, apolumi, that is, destroyed into nothingness, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Would Peter speak to a brother that he thought was a brother like this? Because you thought that a gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. You're not one of us. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. And this just proves that, uh, you know, okay, say this prayer after me. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you know, forgive me all my sins, forgive me all my sins. Oh, you know, come into my heart, give me... Uh, it's nonsense. It's not even in the Bible. What it's trying to say is, overall, but there is no such thing as a sinner's prayer except a sinner from his own heart, from her own heart, gets with God all alone and says, Lord, I need to be saved. Not following me or anyone else in some words that sound like that. You understand? <laughs> this is what people do. It's crazy. It's not biblical. People think they're saved because they went up and repeated somebody else's words. Even if their heart was soft to want to, it still isn't. Do you understand? The want to doesn't cut it. The doing does. The doing of the want to is what cuts it. came up with a saying when I was in the construction business a few years ago. Uh, uh, trying and doing. Uh, how do you know? <laughs> what's the difference? Yeah, what's the difference between trying and doing? The answer is doing is getting it done. Trying doesn't do a thing. I sometimes, when Jill says at the restaurant, I'll try the, the, the chicken, you know, and the rice or whatever, and I'm like, is all you can do try it? Why don't you eat it? <laughs> we don't want to pay for it. You know, I'll have the chicken and the rice or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. All right. Are you with me so far? Oh, yeah. Yes. Are you learning anything? Yes. Is all this new? Yes. No. No. Good. <laughs> you have neither part nor portion, verse 21, in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Could he possibly be saved at this point? No. no. So, what, so what's the next step Peter or any of us should do to someone in that condition that we run into? We tell them what 22 says. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness. And pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. He doesn't even say that it definitely will. Like everybody says to me, oh, just pray and God will forgive you. God loves you, love you, you know, all this nonsense. Well, God does love us. But not in the way it's being taught today. It's just nonsense. God loved us because he went to the cross. That shows his love for all of mankind. But he only loves those who love him as far as having a relationship love. Everybody get that? I know that I love you guys who are my brothers and sisters in the Lord, but I cannot love you like I love Jill. I cannot love you like I love Jaron. I cannot love you like I love 
uh, Ashley and, and Kyla. I cannot do that because it's a different thing. It's a different love. It's no less important, but it's different. You understand? And so God loves His creation, human beings. He says, I want all of you to come to me. I wish that none of you go to the lake of fire. Yet the majority are. The great majority, because only few find life. You see what I'm saying? If I took that scripture by itself that says God wants everyone to be saved, and I just danced around with that one, what would I believe? A lie. A lie, exactly. i got to take it with the other scripture that says, hey, you got to believe, you got to receive, you got to stay there, you got to get with it, you got to be hungry and thirsting for it. You see what I'm saying? This is what's lacking from pulpits. They're not preaching it. They're preaching, oh, God loves you, and you can be successful. All you got to do is believe in yourself. And God will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you believe in yourself. You know, Benny Henry, ben, Benny Henry, <laughs> Benny Henry wrote a book years ago two or three decades ago, uh, two decades ago anyway, on uh, Good Morning Holy Spirit. Everything was the Holy Spirit. What blasphemy. Should have been oh, good, good Morning Jesus, if he's going to say good morning to anything. See, the Holy Spirit is not to be put above Christ. The Holy Spirit himself puts himself down and lifts up who? Christ. Yes, we need the Holy Spirit. Yes, he has to come into us. Yes, we... we uh, uh, but we entreat the Holy Spirit to help us because He's the working part of God, of the Trinity, you see. It was the Holy Spirit who hovered over the sphere that became earth. Okay? But it's the Son who is Savior. It's the Son who is the living Word. Wow. And I'd love to go further, but I don't know how because I, I can't explain it anymore myself. That's why it's so cool. I just believe it. <laughs> I trust God. Ow! Ow! Oh. Ow! While he's gonna, he's gonna miss it. <laughs> Let's go on. So Peter said, da, 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 da. "Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God. If perhaps there's a condition here, what's the condition based on? Simon's heartfelt response, isn't it? If perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness." and bound by iniquity or sin. But it says he believed and was baptized. I believed and was baptized in 1919. By God, I'm saved. This is where people are. No, you're saved when you today, this very moment, believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and trust in him fully and confess it. And when tomorrow comes, you've got to do some more. And when the last day of your life comes and you're about to breathe your last breath, you've got to still be doing it then. Because you can't say, i got ten more to go. One, two, three, four. At night, I'm going to, save, I'm going to get saved. You know, this, people do this. Believe it or not, they do this. They want to live their lives defying God and then at the last minute come and change. That way they get both the best worlds. But the point is, you don't know when your last breath is. You could get a bullet upside the head from someone down the street. You could get hit by a car. You could have an attack of your gallbladder like I did. And if it had exploded in my body, I might have died as long as they took to get me to take care of it. People die from this stuff. Just like that. I had plans for tomorrow. Bang, I'm dead. Somebody else is going to have to do those plans. Wow. And then we have... Grandma who's 90, we have some of us who are in our 60s, we, we don't know. I had to live past, you know, 35 to get saved. God knew if he took me before 35, I'd be, in the, I'd be on my way to the lake of fire. Wow. That's where his foreknowledge comes in. And that's why he said, all who trust me, I'm going to love them save them, they're going to spend eternity with me. And I'm going to show them things they know not yet and can't even fathom. Wow. I'm waiting for that. And I don't have that long to wait. Some of you guys, if Jesus tarries, have longer to wait in a much tougher time. I mean, look. we got to put up with it already at 60. How about Emma and Drew here and, and Hannah? What are you guys going to put up with? With everybody coming to the bathroom, male, female, 
No matter what you're doing, anybody's allowed to go in by law. And that's just one little thing. You understand what I'm saying to you? That was totally unheard of because it's nonsense. It's stupid. And what about little Kyla? The kind of crap she's going to have to put up with. And all other little ones. If Jesus tarries. Teach your children God and His love. His gospel, which is what it is. Don't teach them a Jesus and you this ain't new. Teach them the gospel of Christ. Wow. Because she already knows God. And right ever since she came into the world, the forgetting process started. The, the, the process of, oh, get this, get that, self, self, self. Hey, 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 I want milk, I want something else, I want to grab this, I want to crawl, I don't, you understand what I'm saying to you. <clears throat> Woo! No wonder I didn't have anything. These things are coming out of my mouth. Am I right? Yes. 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 See, that's the beauty of it all. It, it took me a few times at the prison, you know, I was learning to, you know, preach and whatever, and, and I was worried about what I'm going to say, I don't want to say anything wrong, and I, and I still do that. I still, I, I don't ever want to be in front of anyone, I don't care if it's just one person or whatever, to, to think, well, i got to leave. I never want to do that, because I don't. It didn't mean in the first place. I'm not preaching. Me, I'm preaching this. And as long as you guys recognize it, because you're into it yourself, hallelujah, we got a good thing going on. That's what a body is, isn't it? Wow. But at the prison, I realized after a very short time that I don't have to really pretend at all. Not that I was wanting to pretend, but you know what I mean? I was trying to be a teacher. You know, that's right. No. Same way with martial arts, really. You know, you can do all these forms and all this stuff, and you know, but you know that's not real. The reality is that you, it's just very, put yourself into it with all your heart, learn the mechanical things, learn the mechanical things of this, the rights and wrongs, the do's and don'ts. You know, Jesus, God said way back in Isaiah and all throughout the Bible, I want righteousness, mercy, and justice. In those things I delight. That's what his gospel is. Today's courts, the people are there, the people are acting as God's. Judges are taking God's place because they judge humanity. God said so. So they're there by God, whether they're bad judges or not. But what are judges taught today in law school? They're taught that you uphold the law, not righteousness or justice. Those two have nothing to do with the law. How do I know that? The biggest one is what? Homosexuality is now a law. It's accepted. You can't speak out against it without getting in trouble if you're in the right group. Is it a real law? No. Not according to God, it's trash. It's in fact a sin. But the world said, hey, it's a law. So that judge has to sit there and uphold that trash. Do you understand? Not justice, but the law. Please get that in your head. If you ever go to court, if you guys grew up, you got an issue with somebody, you may, we've been to court many times because of rentals and stuff like that, and we had to deal with this stuff. Right and wrong has no place in a court law, in the courtroom. What has place is, can you make the judge convinced of your point of view that you're right? That means you got to have your paperwork right, you got to have your facts straight, and we always did. Jill and I would confer, we write everything down, you know, we'd have it to hand in, you know, you got to have your evidence, da 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 And we won all but one, wasn't it? We didn't, we didn't gain anything on some because even though you win, you can't collect. So, you know, the point is, the system is screwed up, and righteousness and truth has nothing to do with any court proceeding whatsoever. It's about the law, okay? Brian was just part of a, of a murder case here a few months ago, and uh, they did catch the guy from what you're telling me and stuff, and, uh, but even in that, it was the law. Now, it just so happens that the law is against murderers, hallelujah, still. It may not be tomorrow. <laughs> you know, if I see what I'm saying here, yeah. okay, when we're talking about the Word of God and absolute truth, uh, righteousness doesn't matter anything to the law. You look just like me. No. Yeah, she said it. That's no. funny. All right, I want to go on because I'm not even there yet. Are you ready? Yeah. I have to break my glasses. All right, so repent, Simon. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken 
been kind of palmy. And so, you know, it, it doesn't say whether they did or not. And again, he didn't want to do it himself. He wanted somebody else to do it. This is why I want Walter to teach me the word. Don't ever do that. You got to know it for yourself so that when I speak, you know I'm full of it or not. I want the preacher. I want to go to the priest and confess. What for? What's he got to do with anything? He's a pagan twit himself. Mm -hmm. A liar. He can't forgive your sins. Go to God with your sins. So when they testified and preached the word of the Lord, that's what they did. They returned to Jerusalem preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. See, that right there should have taught Simon, hey, I've got to do this myself. I've got to go to God myself. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, and this is desert. Now, this, this is where the, the two things that I was talking about split up in this chapter, okay? So we got this whole Simon business. We got this whole false idea of what the gospel is and how to get the Holy Spirit power. We got all that straightened out now, right? You got to go to God. You got to repent. And the world system here, you offered them money, mammon. And so Paul, or, uh, so he arose, verse 27, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury. This guy was an important guy. He was a minister of state, and he was a, he was a treasurer. Uh, we call him a finance minister today. Uh, had come to Jerusalem to worship. Well, we find out, we, we have to ask, what was he worshiping? Why did he come to Jerusalem to worship? Well, verse 28, and he was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. So it tells me he was reading the, the, the Jewish scripture, the Jewish prophet, so he was probably coming there to worship under Judaism. He decided to accept that as truth. Okay, and that's as much as he knew. And, but he was real in his heart. And so God does something about it. He sends Philip. This is amazing. Are you with me? Yes. Oh, are you with me? Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him. We don't know how fast the chariot was. Probably just walking horses or bullocks or, or donkeys or something pulled this. And he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. So Philip had a clue. Wait a minute, here's a guy reading God's word, but he doesn't know anything. He's just reading it, but he's hungry. He just got done. He went all the way over here from Ethiopia, a place that's not necessarily uh, Jewish, although there are a lot of Ethiopian Jews that have been found out by uh, uh, DNA testing. A lot of Chinese Jews. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. The Jewish uh, gene is just about everywhere in the world. And remember, there's only one race, and that's a human race. Mm -hmm. So, the speed overtakes is, he, he hears him, reading Isaiah the prophet, God knew he would hear him, and he says to him, do you understand what you're reading? And, and the guy says, how can I, unless someone guides me? Now look, he's a minister of finance, is he intelligent? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Is he humble? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. He says, oh yeah, I don't know what I'm reading. He could have said, well, of course I know what I'm reading. Who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> I'm going to finish on finance. Get, finance, get away from me. Finance, finance, same thing. <laughs> All right. How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. This is what an intelligent, seeking, a God-seeking person does. They recognize someone that can help them in the manner of God, and they invite them to say something to them. Okay? Doesn't always work exactly like this, but generally it'll work like this. Okay? So no one should be able to force themselves on you. Oh, here's what God says. Here, you ought to join my group. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? We would not have this church, this Berean Way Fellowship, if you guys weren't willing. Simple as that. I'm not compelling anyone to be here. And sometimes our meetings are smaller, sometimes they're bigger. We've lost a few in the past. We've asked a couple to step down in the past because Scripture you know, demands us to do that. We're not looking for growth, although if God sent the right people, hallelujah. Everybody understands? Yes. Okay? That's what this is about. All right, just a little bit there, Kyle. I'm almost done. You need to listen. <laughs> so how can I unless someone guides me, etc.? And he asked him to set up the place in the scripture which he read was this. 
Now, now we're quoting Isaiah. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, he opened not his mouth. And then he read from Luke. In his uh, humiliation, his justice was taken away, and who, will, uh, rather, Luke also records this, I mean to say. Uh, in his humiliation, his justice was taken away, and who will declare his generation, his life, for his life is taken from the earth. This is all talking about Christ, of course. But he's reading this, and he doesn't get it. And Christ was just not too long before this time crucified. You see, okay? So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? He wants to know, he wants to identify this person. Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth. See, Philip could have said, now here's what you need to know. But Philip was wise enough to say, do you understand what you're reading? Then he shut his mouth. And he got from the eunuch to, to questions in order for him to answer. I mean, Philip could have said a lot of things, couldn't he? But they may not have answered the eunuch because it wouldn't have been on his mind. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Part of a teaching thing. So, so the eunuch answered Philip or, and said, I, da, da, da. so then 35, then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, he started right there in Isaiah with him and, uh, and preached who? Salvation to him. Whenever you see Jesus, put salvation in there. That's what it is. Jesus means salvation. A buying back is what it refers to. A freeing. A letting loose. All of those things are Jesus. Jesus. Yeshua. Jesus. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. Now, so he's had some time to explain the gospel to him. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? And does Philip say, oh, no, nothing. Let's jump down there. He doesn't assume a thing. What does he say to him? Then Philip says, if you believe, you can. No, he doesn't say that. He says, if you believe with all your heart. Not this, oh, believe you're going to be successful and you can. Believe in God. Believe in Mickey Mouse. Believe in this. You know, all this believing nonsense of today. If you believe with all your heart. Now, if you trust with all your soul, your mind, your will, and your heart. Here really refers to his spirit, the real him. Then you may. Otherwise, you're just getting wet, in other words. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is a son of God. And that's all it took. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. That will be the, 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 uh, the uh, eunuch because it was his chariot. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now when they had come out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. He knew he was saved. But Philip was found at Azotus and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. He kept on preaching. He, just, he kept on doing the same thing he just did with this eunuch, basically. But isn't it interesting how God supernaturally transports him over to close to where he was. He runs over there and he gets him, he jumps on, and then he takes him away again. He didn't walk away. He, God, the Holy Spirit, took him away. He zapped him as he beamed me up, Scotty. Only a lot, the real thing. So we have one, in this whole chapter 8, we have one side of a, of a false conversion offering money to buy God and God's power. And then the other half of this chapter 8 is a real conversion of the eunuch with Philip who was humble and who knew, and yet he had all this money he was in control of. Could he not have said, Hey, Philip, I'll give you some money if you give me the Holy Ghost, just like Simon. He could have said it because you know he had it. His salary had to be big. And he probably could have skimmed some without anybody knowing. Do you understand? They both had money. Simon had money. The eunuch had money. Simon was a liar and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, a magician. And he wasn't real. And eunuch was. Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. It's an awesome chapter. Chapter 8. You have the two opposites there, don't we? Who do you want to be? Simon or the yeah. eunuch? And eunuch doesn't always mean someone who was castrated. Eunuch means someone in the service dedicated to that person. So he may not have been someone who was castrated, but someone who uh, he may have been. I don't know, but I'm just saying the, the term is not always used 
only for that. Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Okay? It meant someone in the service who was, uh, you gave your life to this, in other words. I decide to give your life. Uh, <coughs> back in the day when, when slaves, before I close here, just real quick, when slavery, by the way, godly slavery, there's such a thing as godly slavery. Where you, uh, you, you put yourself in, uh, uh, they used to call them indentured slaves, people who came to the United States during the early days in the 15 and 1600s would say to somebody, okay, uh, you pay for my trip over there and I'll work for you for the next year or five years, attempt, whatever the amount of money was, and I'll send, and I'll pay you back this way with my labor and so forth. But that gets me over there because right now I can't do it on my own. And so that kind of slavery is fine. It was only slavery like we have in this country and like been around the world where people by force take other people. That's not slavery. That's total, uh, what do you call it, just uh, outright wrong, <laughs> outright unjust, outright murderous. That's what that is, okay? But that's what most people think slavery is and it isn't, okay? So you have a correct. But when someone, bo uh, when, when a, when a slave was set free, after so many years, God said, okay, this guy works for you, you helped him out, now you must set him free after seven years or whatever years it was. Many times slaves wanted to remain with their master because they developed a love for them, a, a correct love, they worked well together, they did their job, they respected the master for who he or she was, and the master respected them who for who or she they were. And what they would do is they'd put them against the side of a door and with an auger put a, put a hole in their ear, and that would then show that I belong to you forever. I'm not leaving. But as return for me to work for you forever, you house me, you feed me, you clothe me, you take care of my family. I promise on both ends, you understand? That's how this was. And that would have been a just slavery situation if you're going to talk slavery. There's many, many, many more aspects concerning all of that, but just quickly. So in the same way, we give our lives to Christ, it's forever. It's, we come to Him, we stay there, we don't screw around, we don't go back and forth, we don't water it down. Okay? Simon was wrong to begin with, and whether you get right or not, the Bible doesn't tell us. It says, if God will forgive you for this. And God would have, we know, if He'd have been real in His heart. Everybody see that? Yes. But we don't know that He did, the Bible doesn't say it, so we can't, oh, Simon saved. Some people preach this. Where did they get this? The Bible doesn't tell us he got saved. He could have been or he could have not been. That's where we have to leave that one, okay? And, Phil, and, and uh, uh, the eunuch, of course, no problem. From day one, he already knew Jehovah God. He already wanted, knew that the God of Israel was the God of the world, but he needed clarification. And now he got it, and he got the gospel preached. This is why a Jew needs the gospel. A Jew may know the old scripture, the Old Testament, as we call it, but they're not saved because they haven't accepted Yeshua. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. you got to accept salvation or you're not saved. Doesn't that make sense? Mm -hmm. See, people yes. think you got to accept the guy named Jesus to get saved. Well, the guy Jesus is salvation. <laughs> he is that. He doesn't have it. He is that. Wow. Ow! Ow! I always make myself happy when it comes from the Lord. Thank you, Father in heaven, for giving us those two differences in chapter 8 of Acts and for recording it. For posterity, Lord, thank you so much. We do pray you come now, Lord. The world is getting darker and darker. Forgive us our sins and cause us to have a prosperous week, Lord, in all aspects. Our faith in you, first and foremost, our love for you and obedience, our, our monetary situation, our health situation, our relationship situation, Lord. Let it prosper under your rule and regulation. In Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said... Amen. 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 Thank you very much.